Oh, wow. It's Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells. And twerk, and twerk, it, it work, and twerk, it work, no. It just Jingle Bells, just that's fine. Fine by me. Welcome, ho, 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 and welcome to the Cup TV. Well, we put the real and the tea in reality, and we can always come to us first to quench your reality thirst. I am your girl, Alana, your resident evil diva. I'm here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink that tea because you know I love me some tea, purr. And if you have some tea, you know what to do. Hit me up. I am currently drinking orange sun kiss in one hand and water in the next because you know sometimes you just need to put them together balance them out mm -hmm. hydration is important yes and uh so that's what i'm doing but you know i could be drinking it out of my uh cup mug uh -huh, uh -huh. but i'm not because i have bottles so there before but you know what you can do you can get you your own cup mug Creations.etsy.com, where we do ship internationally and domestically in the U.S. So there are no excuses. And I'm looking at you, all the fans of BB all over the world. And new fans of Reindeer Games. Yeah. Uh, Get you a cup merch. Period. Obviously. Hello. And hello, hello, hello. Ho, ho, ho. I'm here to um, jingle the bells today. Mm -hmm. um, I said it right this time, not yeah. jingle the balls, but I could be doing that too. Anyway, hi, I'm Logan Murphy. I say something gay. Gay, uh, in one hand, in my beautiful purple holographic mug, it's not popping up on screen, but it's lavender and beautiful and holographic. Um, I have some coffee with my homemade maple cinnamon vanilla coffee creamer, which is incredible. Um, and then, of course, as always, I have water. But today it's cucumber lime water because I'm feeling fancy. And I had cucumbers I needed to use in my fridge. <laughs> so I was like, I don't need these cucumbers to go bad. We're going to put them in here. But I needed all of the beverages I could get because I have a lot of talking to do this episode, Lana, because this episode of Reindeer Games. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> it, 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 took, it took me through all the emotions. All the emotions. I agree. All the emotions. I went through it all, and we are going to talk about all of them. Yep. But first, while you're here, subscribe to this channel. We have a lot of things that we talk about here. We cover almost all things reality TV, and we put out content on. Um, <laughs> yes, I forgot about that. But we also put out content almost every single day about all things reality TV, almost. So join us, will you? And if you just want to stick around and check, if you haven't seen our other coverage of Reindeer Games, check it out. It'll be right there. Check it out right there. Ding! And um, <clears throat> it'll be there. So check all of our coverage on Reindeer Games and more. Also, if you're a fan of Drag Race or Drag Anything, Check us out on our main channel at The Cup Pod, where we do all things, almost all things drag content. And we put out content almost every single day about drag content. So check us out. And finally, if you happen to be a fan of Eurovision, we have a channel for you, too. Because the Eurovision season is ramping up and things are happening and it's getting very exciting. So we are here to cover almost everything about Eurovision. So check us out at our channel at the cup esc and um you won't be disappointed i promise you if you're a fan of eurovision you won't be disappointed we have you covered period that part so now that we got all of that out of the way let's jump in <sighs> to the drama and the the, oh, the love that is reindeer games so as we know last the other day we lost cody 
And we celebrated. Yeah, we're celebrating again because Cody's gone. The cauliflower is gone and Cody's gone. We love the that. The cauliflower is gone. And I don't know so, why I went 70s with that, but I did. Uh, well, I mean, it worked. It worked. But so Cody's gone and everybody's like, okay, now the field seems to be wide open now. What do we do? How do we make this work? Well, how do we... Mm -hmm get through this and um every it, it, it i mean it just seemed like everybody was you know clicking into who they were talking to nicole had a conversation with Brittany, and i think this will surprise most people coming from nicole nicole was like we have to work with the girls we have to work together with all the girls because the girls have a majority now and we really need to, I think all of the ladies need to come together and work together to get rid of all of the big other powerful threats. And, everybody was, and I was like, <clears throat> from Franzel? Huh. I, you know what? You know what? I am officially, I'm finished with my Franzel era. I will be referring to her as Nicole. Because really, honestly, she is impressing me in this game. And I've always been I've always been someone that absolutely respects the way Nicole plays. Do I agree with everything she's ever done in Big Brother? Absolutely not. No. But I respect her gameplay and the way that she maneuvers around alpha male mm -hmm. alliances mm -hmm. in a very very beautifully done way. Mm -hmm. And I think this is just another example of that. But when I heard her say all the girls need to stick together, I was like Nicole like, talking Nicole? about a women's Nicole? alliance. Like, who are you? <laughs> but okay. And Brittany Victor like, might have finally rubbed off on Nicole instead of the other way around. Maybe. Maybe. Did you see um Taylor tweeting? I don't know why y'all have so so much hate for Franzel. And everyone in the comments being like, so she hasn't seen BB 16, 18, or 22. Got it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Was like, I love oh. Taylor dearly. I love Taylor dearly. But they kind of cleared Taylor just a little bit. I mean, she got cleared and she deserved because, like, honestly, I love Taylor. But And she acknowledged she, it too. And that's why I was like, okay, work. But yeah, I was like, you didn't, the, the hate doesn't come from nowhere. Like, nobody's just like, oh, all of, all of a sudden, I don't like this person. It's the reason why we don't like people on the show. And she should know that, too. Like, nobody came out of her season who people didn't like for no reason. Yeah. It was a reason we didn't, we don't like the, 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 the ramen head uh, Elvis. It's the reason why we don't like the perverted DJ. I'm just saying. It's the reason we don't like these people. And yeah. it wasn't like, it was, I don't know why y'all don't like her. She seems lovely. Did you watch her seasons? It's a reason we didn't like her. And and it was obvious, like, Taylor, girl. And I'm, I'm glad she did acknowledge that. Like, yeah, I did. And I, you know what, and from I'm her perspective, it. I'm glad that she has a lovely relationship yes. with Nicole. Yes. I love that for her. I'm very excited for her to visit Ubley, because I don't think it's very far from, from, uh, Taylor's from Detroit, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I don't uh, think it's uh, that far. Suburb of Detroit. A suburb, suburb of Detroit, Detroit. yeah. But I was also like, oh wow, there are literally three people from Michigan. Yeah, three I, I, winners I, from Michigan in this season. I just want Taylor to be careful going to Ugly. Don't know how if Ugly is like. Mm -hmm. Anyway. There anyway. is at least one person of color that lives in Ugly. And he's married to Nicole. And, and he's, he's married to Nicole. But you know. But you do does he look like I, he's a man of color anymore? I don't. So. There is still a little bit of where in his skin color, a little bit. I haven't seen any very recent photos of Victor. So I don't I'm know. Say, but... Victor looks like a whole white man. Oh God! Okay, <laughs> hold on. Let me go. Like... Hold on. And he's a cop too. He looks like a. Whole I white know. Cop. Sorry, that man looked like a whole white cop to me. Hold I'm like. On. If I didn't know who he was from the show, oh my god, a whole white man. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, 
That's why we oh, said wow. just rubbed off on her. I was like, maybe because she oh, sure wow. rubbed off on him. Oh wow! Oh god! Oh my god! Oh, wow! Well. White man. You know what? If he's happy and if she's happy, whatever. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for them, but I'm just saying, it it it, 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 it may be one person of color in town, but he surely doesn't look like it. Mm-hmm. He has adapted to his surroundings. Just saying. so I want Taylor <sighs> or Xavier to just be careful if they go to other. Agreed. But yeah, I was a little, I was a little surprised. I'm really interested to see what comes of this, like not alliance, but working relationship between Brittany and Nicole. Mm -hmm. I think something is there because they are both very strategic players Mm -hmm. in their own right. And so I'm I'm interested to see what comes of this moving forward. Mm -hmm. I hope it's not continually going after the people of color, but you know, on a show where there are majority people of color now, like <laughs> there's just not that many options anymore. Not options, and, and they both like Frankie, even though they're targeting Frankie. So, like, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. So we do get the the show started, and people are having conversations. We see a conversation with X and Danielle, and X is like, "I am." looking out for you. And it was like, I appreciate it because I, he was like, I felt some type of way when the three of you all were in that group and you chose to save Nicole. And then was like, I understand that, which is valid. valid. Oh yeah. I, under, I understand his feelings and I understand why. And, but Danielle broke it down. was like, we needed you to be in there. And I know it sucks. Yeah. And I know that's not what you wanted, said, but we needed, because if we put Frankie and in their head, they putting Frankie and Cody with Nicole down there. That Nicole could have left, and we still would have been stuck with Frankie and Cody. And 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 she was like, "We." And I mean, we and we even talked about it in our. Um, I think Nicole would have did fine with the challenge. I think she would have won. Honestly. I think. I think. Mm, I don't know, because Frank, mm, well, Frankie wouldn't have gotten the telescope if it wasn't for Axe. So exactly, I think I agree with you. I think Nicole would have. I think Nicole probably would have won. Nicole would have stayed. Yeah. At the at baseline, I think Nicole would have stayed. But what what killed me about this conversation, and I was like, okay, we're getting a little bit of personality here from X. I was like, okay. When Dan, when Danielle told him, I needed you to be my soldier to go into battle. And he was like, I get that. But it still means I was going in. Right. <laughs> and I was like, and I get it. Who would have thought? That the quote unquote block star of this season of Reindeer Games would be X of all people. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't anticipate that myself. Yeah, I'm not I, surprised I mean, given his competition prowess and like this whole thing is about competition. Um, yeah. but I was a little. I was a little surprised. Yeah, I don't think he thought that. But what we're seeing in this game makes me. It is clear. It's clear. His competition, you can't deny X. You yeah. can't deny X about his competition skills. He's going to slay. He go eat the house down with the boots. And all slay. The S-L-E-I-G-H. Slay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he's going to do that. But what we're seeing in this game that I don't even think X realizes or did realize at first when he got in there is how much of the cookout helped X game because he is not that great with connecting with people. He's not the best at Big Brother. He's not the best at connecting with people outside of an alliance that he's already yeah. made. Like he he he's one of those players that finds his group and sticks with his group. You don't talk and, to other and people. It, and that's a great way to play Big Brother for sure. And it really did work for him in twenty three. Mm-hmm. But when he's a free agent doing, and that's why I that's why a lot of people have said, "Oh, I would love to see X on the challenge." I don't think X would do that well on the challenge. I think he would end up being the person that just got put into elimination over and over and over and over, which is kind of what we're seeing here. Mm-hmm. Um, for reindeer games, but um, but yeah, yeah I, th- yeah, I think he's just he's he has to learn how to be 
adaptive. Like I, he is very much like I found my group and I'm gonna stick with yeah. my group. Even in 23, it wasn't if it wasn't for the cookout who was making sure that everybody from the, that group was going to make it. Yeah, I think he would have been out a long time ago. Like people were coming for him if it was. Yeah. Well, I mean, he because he had his relationships with Derek X. He had a relationship with Alyssa. He had like decent I mean, social beginning. connection in the beginning. In the beginning, he had Christian and he had Alyssa. Yeah. And they were very much riding for X. But yeah. it was like, but think about this. Let's say the cookout wasn't the thing. And Tiffany wasn't rocking with X like that. And um uh Kylan wasn't like they had other connections that they could have like Tiffany was with Derek X hard. So hardcore, like she would have been with Derek and Claire and then Hannah with Derek. And so you had Tiffany and Claire and Hannah and, and, and Derek. That would have been a foursome. And then once they got out Christian, yeah, Alyssa would have been was floundering with X. And if it's just those two with them four, and then they could have got in Aza and Derek. They and that would have been the that would have been the the alliance, and that would have ran the we're running game. It would have knocked them out the park. But you know, I don't know. I think he's realizing that oh, having that he needs to be more adaptable for me. I was like, he definitely needs to be more adaptable in these games. If he ever came back to play an actual season of Big Brother, the way he played in twenty three would not fly in the way he would be able to play in a new season yeah. of Big Brother. I think he walks into a like all winner situation and gets targeted immediately mm, for his competition skills. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, and I mean, seeing X and Danielle talking yeah. is not what Brittany wants to see. No, Brittany is like they're talking a lot, and that's scaring me. And I'm like. And then uh, uh, Nicole was like, what happened to the old women's thing? I thought we were working together. I thought but we were working with all the ladies. What happened, Brittany? And why is she speaking to X so much? And I'm like, why can't she? Was it a problem with her just having conversations with the man? Because, like, if y'all were saying so good at being... <laughs> yeah. I, I don't... Because nobody... This... Nobody looked at Brittany and, and Nicole were talking together and was like, why are they talking so much? Why why yeah. are they talking so much? But the minute Danielle talks to X, it's like, well, why are they talking so much? I don't know why they're talking so much. And the same thing with Taylor and Josh, because Taylor and Josh were doing a lot of talking. They were like, oh. Didn't Frankie clock that at one point? Or, or yes. Or? Yeah. He's like, what? I'm like, what? They can't talk? Uh, is that a problem? Because nobody clocks you when you talk to Danielle. Nobody clocks you when you talk to Vic, uh, to Nicole. But yeah. everybody want to clock Josh and Taylor and, and Danielle and X for talking. That bothers me. <laughs> it bothers me. I'm like, they're not clocking you because that's what you're supposed to do in the game. You're supposed to talk to people. Yeah. But, yeah, but they were clocking. They were clocking. They didn't like it. So then we get the doorbell. Ding, 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 ding. Thank God it's not Jordan. It is not Jordan. Oh, thank God. Jordan is done. She has done her due diligence and she has moved on. Santa has sent another elf ambassador in the name of Derek X. And Yay! Everybody was very excited to see Derek, especially the way, and the way X went right in and, sa and said, Swoop! <laughs> I loved it. It was so I, great. I do hope I don't I don't know if I necessarily want X to win the whole thing. And I think at this point he could. I would like to see X continue on far enough to also see Tiffany come in. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Because I think I think that would be just like the most lovely thing to be like, oh, oh my god, and Tiffany? Uh so great. But, I want I, I it was so great. Um so X come, Derek X comes in, everybody's excited to see him. And he announces the naughty or not the naughty or nice challenge, which is <clears throat> the crooner comes in and he's, you know, Big Brother could not go 
even in Ranger games without having a cringy, annoying moment. But it's okay. It's just this one thus far. And the crooner comes in and he's going to sing for them Mm because we have a piano in the room and he's going to come sing and he's going to sing his version of the 12 Days of Christmas. Yeah. But the crooner has um, a problem. He's been dumped by his girlfriend over the phone in a text message. And he's sad. And he doesn't even know why she dumped him. Was it just me? Because immediately upon hearing this guy start singing, I was like, oh, this is a memory challenge and they're going to have to memorize like yeah. all of all of the things. <laughs> immediately I was like, oh, this is a memory challenge. Jesus Christ. No. 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 But I did like this challenge a lot. I did too. They have to run around um, the workshop, house, whatever, find all of the letters, and then unscramble the phrase... Of um, why the girl? Of why was he was dumped, and then like halfway through, because no one was getting it, Derek had to be like, "The colors of the letters mean something," and immediately everyone was like, "Oh, here we go!" He's like, "I just want you to know, Santa told me to tell you the colors mean something on the letters." They were like, uh, oh, "Okay." I mean, uh, I knew, we all knew that Derek was going to be a better host than Jordan. We mm-hmm. all knew that. It was so incredibly refreshing in a way I didn't know I needed. Like, mm-hmm. I absolutely loved seeing Derek in this capacity. And I hope that, I loved seeing him on The Amazing Race, too, when they did uh, the first leg mm-hmm. with him and Claire. And they were hosting that competition. I thought that was lovely, too. I want to see Derek in more hosting roles. I want to see him come back and host a competition. Like, I would love that. I think that'd be great. I think he will. I think he would. If, yeah. he, I think Derek is a shoe in to come back to host competitions in the future. And I think Derek is a shoe in to come back if they do a redemption. Um, if they do a second chances. A, a second hundred. chances or a redemption show. I or think whatever. Derek is the first call. Yeah, I think Derek would be one of the first people to yeah. call. It makes total sense for him to come back and do it again. I think it would be Derek or Claire. I think they would probably ask them both. I think Claire would let Derek do it. I, I think, think Claire. So too. Will, I think Claire would probably be like, you know, I think Derek would. Act and then when they do Survivor Reality All Star Showdown, Claire that's when Claire goes on Survivor. Claire Final. does that. Claire does that. Claire that's does that, so and Claire weird. becomes the second person to complete the BB or the CBS trifecta after Siri and Jared go on Survivor or go on Amazing Race. There we go. Absolutely. It's the first two people to complete the CBS trifecta are Siri Fields and Claire. Claire? I would be very happy about that. I would be very happy. Iconic. Well, and wait, here's the thing. Siri Fields Uh will complete, if she does Amazing Race, she would have complete, not just the CBS trifecta, but then you throw in traitors and, and Snake in the Grass. In the grass. Baby, I'm like, all she house? needs to do is go I on Housewives or something. I don't know. Oh my! Oh no, I don't want no. her on Housewives. No, I don't want her on Housewives. Could you imagine her on like, well, not the challenge because well, Suri would not. House of Villains. That's what I was thinking, but she's not a villain. But she kind of is. Could be. I mean, traitor. She was definitely a villain. House in of Villains. In the nicest season... way possible. House of Villains season two with Suri Fields. Oh my god. I want Sari Fields. I want who else do I want? We'll we'll want... talk about that on another time. We'll do our dream cast for I feel like we should. I think we should oh you know what? Okay, I have an idea. Remind me of this idea when we finish. Uh-huh. Um so we get the um naughty nice competition going and everybody's like, oh, oh, the the letters. The colors make mean something, so they're scrambling. Now they're figuring out. It's Frankie, Nicole, and Danielle. I mean, and, and Brittany, all working together. Nobody's questioning, but they're all working together, trying to figure out this phrase. And then you have Josh, Danielle, and Taylor, who decide when they see the other group working together, like, oh, we should work together. Figure this uh-huh. out. X all by himself, trying to figure it out. Poor X. <laughs> And everybody's figuring it out. And so Brittany, uh, Danielle, I mean, Brittany, uh, Nicole, and and Frankie figure out you are too, but they couldn't figure out the last word. Uh-huh. And so when Josh figures out that's two, and they're like, you are too. 
and they figure out the letters in the last word, and they're like, you are too. And Taylor was like, clingy, you are too clingy. And she spoke. The that way so I have never seen Taylor, Josh, or Danielle run so oh, fast. Yeah. It, it, it was very, it was very Mimi coded. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. Running in her heels. It was very Mimi coded. She was like. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see on Twitter when somebody shared that, uh, the footage of that and they had, they put behind it, move, bitch. <laughs> oh, yes! I have, I have, yeah. <laughs> put, Mimi, put Mimi on Reindeer Game Season 2. You know what? I will be happy with that. But. Taylor goes to the phone, yells out the um the the phrase, and yeah. she wins. Yay! Her second competition win. I mean, they were both been naughty or nice challenges, and to be fair, those are the kinds of challenges that Taylor is best at. But per 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 per. Look, she has a, she has a jingle bell brawl under her belt too. So all she had to do is win the Santa Showdown, and they won last week. Oh you shit! Remember? You're right. Yeah, mm-hmm. her second solo win. Yep. Even though this wasn't really a solo win, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> but they did. They won. She won that, and so she was granted two minutes advantage in the next Jingle Bell Brawl challenge. But she also had to hand out a disadvantage to someone. So as she's having her conversation, mm-hmm. both X and Josh was like, just give it to me. You can give it to me so you don't make no enemies. Just give it to me. It's fine. And I now like, I get now, well, now I get why all of um everyone on this cast on socials was like, we were all desperately trying to lose the Naughty or Nice challenge because we didn't want to give out a disadvantage to anybody. Because that's just like, we're trying to game the game here. Mm-hmm. And so now I see it coming to fruition in this where where they both offer. And I think ultimately she does make the right decision. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't think Josh or X was winning this Jingle Bell Brawl comp. I mean, Josh was very close. Josh Josh was close. Josh was close, but I don't... There were other people that I think were overall closer in it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This... But we, we, she does give Josh the disadvantage in uh, yeah. for because Josh said, "Take it, give it to me. It's fine, no big deal." Because as we have seen in the other uh, Jingle Bell brawls with the advantage and disadvantage, the disadvantage really didn't do that much. It really didn't prohibit too much from happening in the first place. So it was yeah. like, yeah, Cody, uh, Cody had his uh, um, another thing in the mail slot, but he still didn't lose. Um, yeah. Taylor had to put balls on another tree before it started. It took her 30 seconds to do that. So it really, and they won. So it really did it. These disadvantages didn't really, aren't really game changing disadvantages. And um, so what they had to do for the Jingle Bell Brawl was it, they had to build a gingerbread house. A gingerbread it was Tiny house. Vito! It was Tiny Vito. It was Tiny Vito and they had to do it in a gingerbread. But with instead of cans, it was blocks. And you had to re- put it was a puzzle. So it was a puzzle on top of Tiny Vito with the tweezers and these little blocks to make a gingerbread man. And the gingerbread man had to be the exact same way as it is in the answer key. But with Taylor's two-minute advantage and Josh's, Josh's disadvantage was his answer key was covered for five minutes. I Which I was like, like, that's harsh, but... Yeah. I know. I was like, I feel like... I think the one maybe critique that I have more than anything so far in this season, because I am really enjoying it, but I would say the one critique that I have is I feel like the naughty and nice powers, uh, the, the advantages and disadvantages could be balanced a little bit more. Because mm-hmm. like when it came to the first challenge with the letters, I felt like that was a little bit imbalance and like oh no it's only one extra trip that you have to make Mm -hmm. and it didn't end up mattering because cody got all the damn letters anyway but i think i feel like cameron got all the letters oh cameron well cody did too cody didn't get as much as cameron 
Well, true. But well, got the the the, uh, the, the, the access the, the when excess, they right. when they yeah when they he still, the he still got a lot of them, so the disadvantage didn't end up really meaning anything because he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna win. No. But I feel like, and then with last week's, it's like, oh, you get to pick your entire team and you give the entire other team a disadvantage. I'm like, that feels a little imbalanced. This one, I'm like, it could have been three minutes. Yeah, I didn't think it had to be five minutes. I don't think it needed to be five. Thankfully for Josh, he wasn't that far off. No, no, he wasn't. So. When he put it, finally his five minutes up and he took it off, it was literally only two pieces that he needed. It was to literally, leave. like, the, the green and the blue dots were literally flipped. That was all he had, like, messed up. Right. So I was like, work. work. I would have taken that time and I would have just, like, or I would have looked at the puzzle, like, on the floor and I just mm-hmm. would have organized it there. Yeah, exactly. That's what I would have done. Like, if you're going to give me that disadvantage where I can't see it, okay, I'm going to do my best to organize it before I put everything up and then maybe practice with some pieces and, like, practice doing a full stack and then seeing how, I, like, how, like what the dexterity, like, what right. my dexterity level is going to be with this challenge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think the mm-hmm. only person that's competed in this challenge before, I think, is Nicole. Because didn't Nicole compete in Tiny Vito in um, All-Stars? I think so. Wait, and wait. lost to Queen Icon Legend Davon Rogers. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. I didn't watch that episode. I only watched for Davon Winning Vito. But, um, I think Nicole was in that. I'm but, curious now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up. But while all you're right. doing all that looking, um, so we get to the, the challenge and everybody is like, frustrated everybody is frustrated everybody is like this is so whoever thought of this challenge is the devil like this is the worst challenge ever because people's blocks were falling constantly they would get up so high get to the point where they're almost done and boom they lose a whole stack and they constantly just it was everybody was complaining like there was not one person in this challenge who did not get frustrated with these tweezers, these blocks, and how they were falling. Um, then we see Nicole start getting it, the hang of it a little bit better, and Frankie also started getting the hang of it better. It was almost when Josh did really well getting the hang of it better. Um, and so then Nicole gets to the end, and she puts it on, her last block on, on there, and she's cheers. She's like, woo! And they were like, and sorry, Nicole, you're not right. And she looks and she sees she mixed up the colors and she had to take her whole roll off to switch to another one and put it back. So she was like, oh no. And Frankie was like, okay, I'm almost there. Josh, I'm almost done. Let's get it together. Frankie gets to his very last piece to put on and then his whole middle roll collapses. And he's like, no. And yeah. Nicole ends up winning the jingle. Good for her. Ball. Good for her. Good um, for update. Nicole did not compete in Tiny Vito. Ah, uh-huh. okay. Well, then there we go. It was um, Danny competed in Tiny uh-huh. Vito. That's right. Because okay. Danny was HOH that week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good for Nicole. Good for Nicole. Nicole wins the the Jingle Bell Brawl. And Derek lets them know that only one person is going to compete in the Santa Showdown. And if they complete the Santa Showdown, that person will pick someone else to compete in the Santa Showdown. And if that person, and so on and so forth. Until... Someone is eliminated. But every time someone comes back, we lose a minute of time on the clock. I love this twist. Mm-hmm. I love this twist. I hope in I hope in some capacity we can see this twist in the in the main series of Big Brother. Absolutely. I don't, I don't know how. It should be a veto. It has to be a veto. Oh, it has to be okay. A Okay, yeah, I mean... Because when you're doing an HOH, everybody can play for HOH. But when you do an individual veto... I mean, look, you've seen vetoes that last 7, 12 hours. So, 
Yeah, exactly. So, okay. yeah. so we can do this. It has yeah. to be an individual veto, and that would be. And they randomly pick who goes first. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, or or it could be an HOH. It could be an HOH because that it could be like knockout, like knockout style. Exactly. Yeah, that's a, It'll, ooh, or so it could be for like a secret power. Or secret. Oh, they could yeah. really adapt this for almost it. Could you imagine this is a double eviction veto? <gasps> no, because they don't have time. That wouldn't that double eviction has to go quick. Well, no, I'm saying second double eviction veto. Because then there's gonna be less people playing the HOH anyway. So it takes less time. But could they do a do that? They couldn't do that live, could they? Probably. It would just have to be shorter periods of time. It would have to be a different... Cha- it wouldn't be this challenge, necessarily. It would just have to be a shorter challenge with shorter intervals. So if you did, like, I don't know, like, three minutes to solve a slide puzzle. Mm, oh. Or something something along those lines. Or, like, the, the ship puzzle where Ian won the veto in 14. Mm-hmm. Something along those lines where, like, one person competes. If you finish it, you move on to the final round. If you don't finish it, you're out. And okay. then it's something something along those something lines. Along that line. I can see yeah. something like that, but like I think what the time thing, it can be yeah. definitely something like a HOH, and you just yeah. have to show your cards at that point. Like who do you pick to go behind you? Who's going to lose a minute of time yeah. to do this? And we keep we keep that energy up throughout the whole thing. Oh, that would be cute. That would be cute. Did you um while we're still on the topic of the jingle bell brawl really quick, did you see uh Derek? on RHAP talking about this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Where he was like, oh, I was fully Jeff Probsting all of this hosting. And they literally had to like say in my earpiece, Derek, you need to stop. (laughs) (laughs) And his his version of Jeff Jeff Probsting, I'm like, I loved it. I would have loved to see that. Like I would have loved to see it. Like ugh. Stop doing that to people. Uh, this is Ranger Games. Let them have a little fun. It could be, it don't have to be like Big Brother. I mean, but we do have Julie when sometimes like, and the, he has one left. And he has, you know, they do that in the, when exactly. they're on the wall. And they exactly. Like, you know, things, like, and but those are all scripted by BB. So, know, you know, when but, it's not scripted by BB, they can't have them do it, of course, because, you know, yeah, because whatever, 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 whatever. But, this Santa showdown caused all of the drama, the kerfuffle, Ooh. the tears. Ooh. Oh God! It was everything. <sighs> it was it was craziness. Like because you have. Okay. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say because you have some people being like, "Put me in right mm-hmm. now," and then you had mm-hmm. other people being like, "Don't put me in, please." Wait, hold on. I'm gonna do my. I'm gonna do my Taylor and Tiffany as Britney impersonation right now. Please, please don't put me in. Please, I can't do it. I can't. I can't do it, X. I can't do it. Please, please don't put me in. Oh, I. I just- you want to know what's so funny? Please. You just started doing that. And I just happened to look down at my phone and saw Taylor reacting that moment. <laughs> that was literally, I saw that this morning and I was like, they are incredible. Brittany has co signed on that, so don't I'm about worry. To, I'm, about, I'm about to say, and Brittany is like, yeah, they got it right. Because the day, the way I would look so haggard on day three, like, please, please <laughs> 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 I was like, oh my God. I'm <laughs> not saying you're taking food out of my kid's mouth, but kind of. <laughs> And that's why I said when Brittany stop Haynes was yelling, cast, stop yelling at me right now because my ears are popping. <laughs> and I turned down my audio too. I don't know what's happening today. It's so but loud. That's my my audio is literally at fifty. My input audio is at fifty right now. <laughs> that's why I'm gagged. Anyway, um, that's why I said when Brittany Haynes was cast on this, I was like, she is going to provide entertainment. I don't know how she's going to do. I don't care how she does. 
she's going to provide entertainment and that is exactly what she's done and i am i am so thrilled i need her when they do the redemption season for bb30 i need britney to come back i need it i don't know that she would do a full season Absolutely. But God, I, I would scream, cry, and throw up to see Brittany Haynes in a full Big Brother house again. Brittany is so freaking entertaining. She's so funny. She knows how to laugh at herself. She doesn't take anything seriously, which I appreciate and I love. Yeah. Like, because people are trying to come for Taylor and Tiffany for, for reenacting Brittany in the... I'm like... Brittany was like, Josh Brittany and I were like, literally doing it in the house. So, like, whatever. I was like... Brittany was like, we it, it really is very true. And I'm like, why y'all coming for Tiffany and Taylor when it nobody has a problem when dip when Brittany be roasting people in the DRs? Like literally Brittany yeah. does it. She's a queen, she's mother, she ate. That's great. And then when Taylor do it, it's like she's so classless, she's so rude. Like, no, she's having fun, just like everybody else. And Brittany co-signed it was like, yeah, it was hilarious. That's and you know what, what that's called? Like. Microaggressions. Anyway, yep. Anyway. But, um, so that was, yeah, Brittany begging to X was one of the funniest moments. She was like, please. please. Because, okay, we're going to get to that because we have to go through the rest. I'm sorry. I just, the moment presented itself and I, I needed understand. to just, I understand. You, know. you did what you Wait. needed to do. You did what needed to be done. And you know what? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm just going to. Please. But yes, so I'm actually gonna put this on because it's kind of cold. But yes, go ahead. They were trying to figure out what to do. Well, Nicole was trying to figure out what to do. Frankie was like, "You can put me in first, or you, or don't put me in and put in some, you know." The, Brittany, she was like, I, could, "I don't know if Brittany wants to do it. I don't know. I don't know." And so Brittany was like, "I don't really want to do it. I really want to do it." But she's like, "But somebody's gonna pick me." Anyway, if I don't do it, if you don't pick yeah. me, somebody's gonna pick me. And I was like, this is the opportunity you put Brittany in first. Give her all the time. Mm -hmm. Give her all the time in the world to figure it out. And then once she figures it out, and because she would have been perfectly fine doing it with the four minutes and 30 seconds mm -hmm. that started. Yeah. And then she comes back and then she could have been like, my girl, I'm gonna give you all this time. Danielle, I'm gonna put you in. You get the next amount of time. Yeah. Danielle would have been fine. She would have got it done. Yep. And then give it to Taylor so Taylor can have the next amount of time. Taylor would have had it. And then give it to Frankie. Like, exactly. That exactly. could have been that you give the men the less amount of time. That's what I would have done. But Nicole didn't do that. I she wouldn't have I I don't know that I would have risked the Taylor of it all. I do think Taylor would have completed the challenge at 3:30 or 2:30. I think. If if I'm Danielle in that scenario, I don't give it to Taylor. I give it to Frankie. Not in two that, minutes. But the reason why is I think if Frankie completes it, Frankie gives it to X. But that's what she didn't want to happen. Oh, true. That's why I said she gave it to X. But that's what Nicole have X wanted Frankie. to happen. That's yeah. what Nicole wanted to happen. So if, if I'm Danielle Nicole, that's, yeah, but. If I was Danny coming back, if she came back in after the three minutes and gave it to X, X does it in his two, but he would have did it. Or even Josh. Back. I think or Josh could have completed it and then, then gave it to Frankie. sniped Frankie. But I, do, but I mean, Frankie didn't do all that bad in the challenge either. Frankie so. did it in two minutes. Frankie did his so, in two minutes. I yeah. think, yeah, if it would have been back and forth. But, but, but that's not what happened. Nicole ended up giving it to Frankie first. Sure. And then uh, Frankie, Frankie Slade. Frankie Slade. Frankie then gives it to Xavier. Yeah. Xavier kills. Then Xavier ends not, up. Not not as well as I thought. He, no, he did, did it. He, but... he did it, but it took him four minutes to do it. Yeah. I was Almost like, oh, four minutes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He would have been out. He would have been out. But Xavier yeah. took it almost four minutes to do it. And then he decides this is where the, the pleading comes in. From Brittany, where she's like, please, Xavier, don't give it to me. Please, please don't give it to me because I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't know what to do. Please don't give it to me. Please, it's be my death. If you put me in there, I'm done. I'm over. I've, and in I've this decided. Moment, I have decided to put Brittany. <laughs> but in this moment is where I was annoyed with Brittany. This is yeah. the one moment in the episode I was annoyed with Brittany because Brittany was the fetus 
before she even got out there. Like before, it, the, as soon as they said what the challenge was, her attitude was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. There's no way I can do it. And she begging and she pleading and she's like, I can't do it. But she was, then turns around and said, I want to watch my girl. My girls are watching this. And I want my girls to know that I can do this. But you hmm. didn't exhibit that you could do this. My thing is, if you know your children are going to watch this, which you know, and you don't want them to see you with this defeatist attitude because it's like, oh, okay, so do I, it's okay for me to be like, I can't do this. I can't do this until somebody makes me do it. And then when I do it, it's like, oh, I can't do it. And I understand because sometimes we are like that. We're like, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's so bad. I can't do it. I was just annoyed with the whole, because I felt like, I'm like, Brittany, you are good at this game. You can do this. Like, I felt like everybody else had more belief in Brittany than she did. And I hate that for her. I hate that she didn't believe in herself because I was like, this is still what three minutes? It was three minutes. I was like, I think she could yeah. do it. I was like, I think she could do it. I think she could do it with three minutes on that clock. And I feel like she can do it. And I, she was just like, I don't know, I can do it. But Xavier ends up picking Brittany anyway. And she's like, That's it. I'm done. I'm going home. I'm going. I'm going home. I'm doing this. This is it. And then she gets out there and she kills it. And she gets it with a minute and 17 seconds it's left. Like, oh my God. 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 Falls to the ground. And she hates everybody in there. I hate all of these bitches. I was just like, come on now, Brittany. Yes. I was like, I'm Giving glad you us did it. Reality TV moments. I'm glad you mothered it because you did. You killed it, but yeah. we believed in you. And I want Brittany to believe in herself because she is amazing. She it is would be woman. such. It would be such a beautiful redemption story to see Brittany win this season. I mean, it would be. And maybe would be. I'm rooting for that outcome. I'm still yeah. rooting for. I'm still rooting for Taylor. I'm you still rooting for whoever you want. I'm rooting. You know what? I'm rooting for everybody at this point. That's the problem. The two well, people I didn't want to win got eliminated well, first and second. Period. So whoever wins this season, I'm okay, okay. with it. Fine. <laughs> Love that for them. And I think I am in agreement with you on that. I'm like, I really don't care who wins. Won. With her performance in this so far, I'm like, you know what? Sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But, but she would maybe be my sixth out of six outcomes. But, you know. I would say Fifth out of six. Do you have Josh below her or Frankie? No, Frankie below her. That's fair. I have Frankie above her. I don't have Frankie. I mean, I don't hate. I don't dislike Frankie. I don't. Dislike no, her. and I, I think, think Frankie's Frankie. actually been. I mean, I don't. I don't dislike Frankie at all, and I've always really liked Frankie. But I find him. Uh, I think he's matured a lot, and mm -hmm. it's it's showing for sure. What I, what I, why I wouldn't put Frankie above Nicole is because I feel like Frankie is getting very comfortable winning competition. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm going to slay. I'm going to win. And I, I want to see him knock down a pig. I want to feel like he won't win and he's losing and yeah. he's freaking out. But in these moments, as of right now, he hadn't had that real moment because yeah. he was he's done really well in pretty much yeah. everything. And so, he just got announced to uh, be joining the Broadway cast of Titanic. So good for him. Back on Broadway. Good on you, Frankie. It's the, no the Titanic musical that's all Celine Dion. Mm -hmm. So he's, going, he's doing that show. That also, you. at one point, I don't know if she's still on it, Featured Rosé from Drag Race. You don't know Rosé, Lana, but Rosé's great. Good for you. Yeah. And so great. So then um, Brittany is like trying to... Now Brittany has to decide who she's going to send in. And so Brittany talks to Nicole. She's like, I don't know what you want to do. She, and so she talks to Taylor. And Taylor's like, I mean, if you got to put me in, go ahead and do it. I would, I would rather do it now than later. So you can send me in. And she was like, you won't be mad. She was like, no, no, I won't be mad. You can send me in. And then she's like, and so Frankie's like, well, what, I mean, Danielle was pushing for you. And they were like trying to figure out who was pushing for Brittany to go in. And they're like, it gotta be Danielle. Talk to X. He has to, she was the one. And so she goes to talk to X and ask X why she, he put her in. And he was like, because I was trying to protect Danielle. 
And this is yet another example of why X isn't the best at Big Brother. Because I, I, I honestly didn't find this to be the reason why Danielle went in. I think Brittany was going to put Danielle oh no. in anyway. I don't and think so this is. I don't think this is the catalyst for why Brittany put Danielle in. But also, you're still technically playing Big Brother. Why are you openly saying this is who I'm trying to protect? That's where I had the the difficulty with it personally. But Brittany does put in Danielle, and so Danielle goes in with two minutes. Two minutes 30. 30. Two minutes yeah. and 30 seconds. And um, we're waiting to hear the, either the sleigh bells or Jack Frost laughing. And we hear Jack Frost laughing. Mother did not complete the challenge. A moment of, a moment of silence, please. I can't take it. Danielle <sighs> Reyes is my all time, forever yeah. favorite Big Brother player of all times. Yeah. He is the best player to never win this game. Yeah. You can argue with the wall. I don't care who you are. You will never will change be. my mind. I because Dan be. Danielle is the best player to never win this game. And she lost due to technicalities and 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 sabotaged by the CBS production by and letting the hamster people, wheel and letting these people watch at home. So that's why she is not back here in Reindeer Games as a winner when she yeah. should be. Um, Danielle, my heart broke in that moment. I was just like, no, no, no. I, uh, I was rooting so hard. I wanted this to be the redemption arc for Danielle to finally get a win on Big Brother to be able to say she won a Big Brother game. Even if it was Reindeer Games, I wanted her to win it. And my heart, my heart hurts to do this. Oh! Ah! Ah! <laughs> no. uh, I hate it. I hate it so much. Wait, did it change or no? Oh God. I, oh, I did, oh, nope. I took it away. No, it's there. Unfortunately, I took it away. I'm sorry. I put it. I was like, back? I was like, oh, she got seventh again. She's only gotten seventh once. Uh, once. Because she got sixth on BB7. Yep. But I was like... <sighs> I will say, you know, as someone that came to watching Big Brother later and subsequently went back and watched BB3 and BB7, um, I've always just been in awe of Danielle <sighs> Reyes. And we've all, you know... She's one of those players that we, a lot of us have always said, oh my God, if Danielle comes back. like, And we never thought it would happen. And I don't even care if it's in a damn Reindeer Games. I feel so blessed to have been able to watch Danielle Reyes play Big Brother live and experience Danielle Reyes in this circumstance and in this time. And I mean, our hearts broke and everybody's in the house did. And Taylor oh. was even like, the reason I said yes to Big Brother was because of Daniel Reyes. Like, X was like, my win, Taylor's, Taylor's win, win would not have been anything. We would not have happened if it wasn't for Daniel Reyes. And Josh was like, oh, I mean, everybody was crying. Everybody was sad. Every Nobody wanted it to go out like this. I think the yeah. only people, it was just, the respect for Danielle was evident in the house. Yeah. It was evident throughout the house. Brittany was like, I hate doing this. I didn't want to do it. I'm so sorry I had to call, put you out there. I didn't want to. Um, but it was like, ugh, this was the worst outcome. Yeah. And I, I think the difficulty, too, is I think this is the only way Danielle goes out before the actual Ranger games. Yep. 
Because I think otherwise, nervous. I think otherwise she is so she was so perfectly insulated. Yep. And I, I think that was the only way, really, that she could have. She could have gone out, but but mother is not over. It's not over for mother. No, because mother gets to go pick her present, and she goes to the tree. She's I'm I'm picking this big box, and they're like, "Go for it!" And she picks that box, and she opens it up, and it's the five thousand dollars. Yay! Yay! I love it. I'm like, see, even when you lose, we win. We won by getting Benigno Reyes back on TV, and she wins by getting another check that somebody just ain't gonna get. Somebody gonna get a hundred thousand dollars, but just know the second person with the most money leaving that is gonna be Danielle Reyes. Period. Yeah. I love her for her. I am a super fan of Danielle Reyes. I love, Same. love, love her. Same. I emulated my game play after her. Yeah, I, I've said it from the beginning as since I started playing games that watching Daniel Reyes told me, keep your eyes open and your mouth closed. You observe, yeah. you look. And that yeah. has helped me throughout these games that I've played and have won yeah. because of Daniel Reyes. So I adore this woman so much. And I am not that much younger than Daniel Reyes. Let me just put that out there. But she is mother to me. She is mother to me. She's 51 years old. She came on the show looking amazing and slayed. I I'm a, a I need to see Danielle Reyes on Trader 3. Let's just put that out Please. there. Please. <sighs> I think we Trader all need 3. it. We need it on Trader. She wants to do Survivor as well. Let her do Survivor. Her. Jeff Probst. Put her. I need. I. You know, at this point, I would be very surprised if season fifty was not a reality rumble. I would love that. Oh, I, would I love think. That. I think it feels like the perfect thing to do. It's time for it. I think so. It's they're the only. They're the only show that hasn't done something along those lines. And here's the thing. Even if it's not just reality, even if it's like celebrities as well, because it's a lot of celebrities who want to do Survivor. Monet Exchange has very openly said she wants to play Survivor. She's a huge Survivor fan. B Billie Eilish has said she wanted to play Survivor. Could you, could you imagine? Could you imagine a universe where Billie Eilish, Monet Exchange, and Danielle Reyes were on the same season of Survivor? It's so many people who said they wanted to play Survivor. Survivor is such a you know who you know who else they would immediately put on Survivor. They put Sia. Uh, if Sia wants to play, Sia if Sia play. wanted to play Survivor, Sia would be. Would she wear the wig every day? No, we don't know Sia. what she looks like. We know what she looks like, so no, I don't think she would because that's. Her but point. wouldn't it be so camp if she did? That wig would be so disgusting. But I know, but like, wouldn't it be so camp if she did? Ugh, I want to see. I I I need big, um Survivor to do something like either a yeah. reality rumble type deal or celebrities with reality stars. I just need that to happen on Survivor. I think something so big good. needs to happen for fifty, yeah. and I think they know that something big needs to happen. If it's not going to be a reality rumble, then it's going to be a redemption season. And honestly, either way, I'm fine. But like, I just want to see more of my favorites on more shows that I like. Could you exactly. imagine Britney on Traders? I could. Oh, good. I think so good. honestly, the only people like from this cast specifically, I think that would do well on Traders would be Danny Reyes and Brittany. Yeah. And now they have a pre existing beef going into the game, which I would love to see. Yeah, because I don't know if we saw when Brittany hugged Danielle. Oh. She, Danielle was not happy. And obviously, there's been time since. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I'm sure they're fine now. Yeah. But, you know. I don't know. I kind of think Taylor would eat at Traders. I, you know, I think Taylor. Mm. Her social game. I don't think people. If she is a trader, yeah, I don't think people would detect that right away. But I don't know. I don't know. But we'll yeah, I, I want to see Taylor on anything and everything I can find. But 
That See, I was supposed to say she wanted to do Dance with the Stars, which I was like, what? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Have there been any Big Brother people on? No. Okay. No. No. No cross-contamination I mean... on the networks yet. Oh, but... yeah, no. <laughs> but when the contracts is up. Mm make it happen but that's that y'all Danielle walks away with five thousand dollars but and everybody stares sad but she's great she's she's still mother she's still slaying we yeah. love we love Danielle Reyes we stand her in this house it is what sure it do. is but that's about it y'all we have reached the first week and we're going into the next week on Monday so we will be back here on Tuesday to talk all things reindeer games um, I'm I'm enjoying it way more than I thought I would. Uh, absolutely. This first week, I'm sick. I'm kind of sad. We only have three more episodes. I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little upset that there's only three more. But I, I feel like if Big Brother would have done this in the season, we would have been okay with with a hundred episodes, a hundred <laughs> days in the house. But they I hope we I hope we see this concept move forward, and I hope if they do Reindeer Games next year. It's you twelve people, right? The twelve days of Christmas, 12 exactly. Days, twelve days of reindeer games. I love that. I would love to see that happen, and it would be great. So even if this it. was daily, I'm here for it. I will sit. I'll be sad. I, I would be sad. sad for it daily, but absolutely, absolutely. Do we want to do winner prediction going into the final week? Who do you have? I think it's going to be Josh. I'm going to say Josh, and my reasoning for that is I think Josh is very well insulated right now in the game. I think he's still a threat, but he's not the person that everybody is looking at. And I think he can sneak through the next two episodes, make it to those reindeer games, and I think he stands a great shot. I don't know what the reindeer games is going to entail, but I think he stands a great shot at winning. So I'm going to go with Josh. That was actually my pick. I was like, oh, no, wow. I think yeah. the only two names who that has not been thrown out by anybody this well, besides the person who's already gone, is yeah. Josh and Taylor. Yep. And so they I think Josh has a really, really good chance. Um oh yeah, I they're think, literally the only two people that haven't gone into a Santa showdown yet. Yep. Yeah, yep. Imagine they go into a Santa showdown against each other. I wouldn't be mad at that. No. Also on the rise, I don't know if you've seen this, but it's some um, conversations online because everybody always loves to put Taylor with everybody at of all course. times. Of course. But they're saying that it's rumored that there's a connection between Josh and Taylor. And the I Jailer, like... Right. The Jailer fans might have a new jailer to stand for. You know, I wouldn't be mad at it. I mean, I wouldn't be that I mad at it mad, I wouldn't be mad at that. I was like, I mean, if that's what it is, it is what it is. But, yeah, that's that's a little something that they throwing out online. So I'm like, okay. All right. Let's work. But, yeah, I do think Josh is in a really good position to make it to the Reindeer Games and a very good position to actually win the Reindeer Games because I think everybody's going to be shooting at Frankie and Xavier in these next couple of episodes. And then... Could you imagine if the Final Four is Josh, Brittany, Nicole, and Taylor? I, I love that, honestly. I'm not mad. I wouldn't be mad at it at all. And Because I think, I think the person I think is going to win is Josh. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, honestly, despite really enjoying everybody left in the competition, I do think my heart pick is Brittany Haynes. Because mm -hmm. I really would like to see Brittany be a winner of a Big Brother something. Mm -hmm. So I think my heart pick would really be Brittany. I mean, that's what I was feeling for Danielle, so I understand that. Yeah. I was definitely feeling for Danielle as well, of course. But given the scenario we are now in... I think it's going to be pretty for me. Yep. But. So there we have it. That's it, y'all. We have done it. We appreciate you watching. We will be back next time, next week. Same time, same panel.
probably. Probably. And we'll, be, we'll, be, <laughs> we'll be talking all things reindeer games. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, let us know you support us and we appreciate all of the support hit the follow and the shares and the notification bell so you will never miss the video when we drop it because we do drop videos almost every single day if you are a fan of the drag race or the drag world we cover almost all things drag on our main channel at the cup pod so be sure to go over there and follow us over there and subscribe and do all the things over there that they support us and we appreciate you for doing it over there too and if you happen to be a fan of Eurovision, we have another channel for you because Eurovision season is ramping up and we are coming with <laughs> it. Absolutely stop it. Absolutely stop it. No, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do that because you are a fan of Eurovision and you enjoy Eurovision and you don't get to complain about talking about your vision. You know why? Because our fans don't want to hear you complain because they are appreciative of you going all out and giving all the content. So we appreciate that. So you don't get to complain and cry about it. And it started too early this year. That's all I'm saying. I'm excited for it. Don't get me wrong. But see, you're also, crying. Also, we're not even doing any of the coverage. So why are I you am talking about this? I am I mean. not because I don't appreciate it like you do. So therefore, I I only do things I appreciate, and so therefore I am here. But you can also follow us and subscribe over there at the Cup ESC, and you can mm -hmm. all, all things, everything Eurovision, and they enjoy doing every bit of it. So oh, I love all of it. It's just stop having everything in December. <laughs> Thank you. Follow us also on our social medias at The Cup Pod on our Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok because we have some funny moments and we put them all out there. We'll be ramping all of our socials back up in the new year, we promise. Yep. So yep, 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 yep. make sure to follow us on all of those things. You can follow Logan and I on our Twitters. It's right down there. Mm -hmm. My Instagram is right there. My TikTok is the same as my Twitter. So you can follow me on all of those socials on all those things. And if you keep scrolling down a little bit in the description, you can get your cup merch, not limited to the cup mug, but we have some very other good stuff you can get too. And uh, yeah, that is that. We appreciate you. We had a great time. We'll be back. Ranger Games is not over yet. So, mm -hmm. well, cheers, y'all. Cheers. cheers. Bye. Oh, uh, bye bye. Ho, 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 and all of that. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Danielle raised the mother. Par. <laughs>